and then you can uh, fix it. So I would like first to thank you for joining this uh, webinar regarding transcriptomics. Uh, so I will start presenting by myself. I'm uh, Dr. Abdurrahim Gasser. So I'm regional account manager at uh, Biomarker Technologies, BM Kijin. So uh, the aim of this webinar is just to discuss or to give uh, a wide introduction regarding uh, transcriptomics sequencing and uh, what you need to know before starting your transcriptome sequencing. Um, I just put the laser up. So I will start by uh, just a quick uh, introduction on the company that I'm working with. Uh, BMK Gene is one of the leading genomic uh, companies uh, existing since 2009. Uh, BMK Gene has um, uh, high throughput sequencing platforms, so to perform sequencing on DNA and RNA with high quality uh, professionals, like around 500 professional teams. And we are having our proper research and development team. So that's allow us to have a self-development strategies, like we have been developing 200 bioinformatics software and contributing on 60 patents of inventions. And all of that, uh, of course, and the research we have to publish. So we are contributing to more than 4,500 high impact factors journals with the different lab and institutions in Europe and over the world. Um, BMK Gene has as well uh, high throughput sequencing platforms. Uh, I will go back on the platforms of sequencing during my presentation because I make my presentation really easy for the people even they don't have a strong background on molecular biology. But here, I would just show you a snapshot of what PMK Gene has as a sequencing platforms or sequencing machines that uh, allow people to do sequencing for DNA and RNA. So we have an Illumina, Illumina Nova 6000. This is really known for people who did before sequencing. We have as well a Nanopore and PacBio. This is a third generation sequencing with different uh, uh, high throughput sequencing machines like Promethean 48 and SQL2. We are having as well different other uh, sequencing platforms like 10X Genomics and MGI or PGI. And we try always to get the, 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 the latest technologies on sequencing platforms. Uh, we're getting recently the review system with high throughput on a back by you uh, uh, company. And we have as well uh, spatial transcriptomics, uh, unique S1000 uh, ship for a subcellular level resolution developed by our own group on the BMK uh, gene. Um, as well a snapshot of the, what we have as, as a platforms on, on the laboratory level. So uh, we have a big uh, laboratory space over 20,000 square feet place. Uh, we have a fully automated uh, BL1000 advanced biomolecular instrument. And we are working uh, following the standard procedures uh, from the sample extractions to the sequencing. And we have an adapted uh, protocols for uh, diverse goal, research goals, like uh, depends of human pay, uh, microbiota, uh, plants, and uh, different other projects related to different topics of research. Uh, our company has recently a um, um, platform or um, uh, um, let's see, a place where we can uh, fulfill our European uh, customers' uh, requirements. Uh, which is in Germany since 2022. So that's allow us a really quick uh, turnaround time for our European customers. Uh, moreover, BMK Gene has developed uh, a self-developed, uh, reliable and easy to use online bioinformatics analysis platform. Like, you know, if you uh, do sequencing and basically like a, an example, like if you do human sequencing with the genome is really big, so you need really uh, like a big computers to uh, try to include all your data. So um, BMK Gene has developed her own uh, space for the client to store the data and even do the, the, the analysis from the basic data analysis to the advanced analysis. Uh, BMK Gene has a different services. So we are uh, basically doing different type of sequencing for different topics. So we are, as I said before, on plant and animal genomics. So we are doing human genetics, we are doing single cell omics, and we are having, as I said, uh, bioinformatics developed by BMK Cloud. We are doing microbial genomics and transcriptomics and epigenetics. You know that today the, the, the talk of the webinar is mainly uh, around the transcriptomics because the time and uh, 
the amount of the information that people can assimilate is too big if I would talk about all the topics. So we start with the webinar to done transcriptomics and hope uh, by the end we can I can get your comments and we can make maybe a, a plan for another webinars. But I will I will be maybe now uh, talking like in a simple way about transcriptomics. So then the people, as I said, even they don't have knowledge on transcriptomics can follow and can understand what this means. So first of all, the question that you ask when you want, uh, you're in the lab and you want to start your uh, uh, mRNA sequencing or transcriptomic sequencing. So that is some things that you have to think and you need to know before uh, doing an experiment on uh, transcriptomic sequencing. First of all, is to know the application of transcriptomics. So what, what is made for and what the transcriptomic sequencing can give me as an information. Uh, and what can answer about the, uh, my research projects. So first of all, I would say, uh, if you want to use transcriptomics is to uh, understand or to have a general view of gene expression patterns on your cells or tissue or organs or whatever. Uh, if you have a question like try to identify potential biomarkers, like people are using a treatment for different diseases and they want to look for biomarkers or to for a diagnosis or prognosis and even a treatment response prediction, so they can use transcriptomics to get the answer. Uh, moreover, if you are working on like in vitro, for example, and using some drug and you look the drug effects on gene expression or drug toxicity or efficacy, uh, target identification and drug optimization. So transcriptomics can help. And if you want to uncover uh, gene functions and the roles in biological process like development, immune reactions, tumor reactions, and whatever, uh, to study is the generation of different mRNA isoforms from a single gene, like try to identify uh, new uh, isoforms of, of a protein for example, or, or to reveal uh, an interconnected gene networks and synanic pathways. And there is others, others applications that, that is possible that transcriptomics can answer, but this is basically the main ones if you ask, uh, doing research and ask, okay, I want to see that, so then maybe transcriptomics is a good choice for you to, to use to, uh, to get the, the answer about your question. Uh, so then by definition, transcriptomics is the study of the all RNA molecules in the cell. And the study of the all RNA molecule in the cells has a different level of complexity. And uh, now in the market, there is different level of uh, uh, complexity of analysis of uh, transcriptome. So I will, I, will, I will maybe start one by one. For first one, like um, previously people were just taking like, for, for example, taking organs like liver, let's see, and take a group of cells and then try to isolate or extract the RNA from the group of cells and then do RNA sequencing that is called uh, bulk RNA sequencing. But as you know, if you take an organ or for example, as I said, liver, there is hepatocyte cells, there is vascular cells, there is immune cells on it. So there is a mix of cells. So um, so then the people make that, okay, so then the, the if we can isolate cell by cell and do uh, transcriptome analysis or mRNA sequencing on the single cell. And this is called the single cell RNA sequencing. And now there is really advanced or really complex um, methods as well is people are saying some cells are really fragile if you isolate them one by one, for example, neuronal cells. So they can die, they can change their phenotype quickly. So then uh, to use them as a single cell to do transcriptomics is really difficult on, on experimental level. So uh, and now there is a technology where you can only isolate like a nucleus. And here you can say like people, you can uh, find uh, descriptions that the people call it as a single nucleus RNA sequencing. So each uh, analysis, bulk RNA single cell or single nucleus has specific protocols and workflow and analysis. So I will try to explain during my talk on, on that. Uh, and um, much more uh, recently, like people are developing new technologies, like saying, okay, instead of isolating single cells or single nucleus, let's take the organ, total organ and do sections. And we try to capture from these sections, the RNA, and uh, at the same time, look to the transcriptomics and look what the, where the, the cells are located inside the organ, if they are vascular cells and everything. So this is called spatial transcriptomics. So in, in a simple way, uh, if I will explain it, uh, I, I, I used to use this example for myself to understand it. Uh, if you have like a cocktail of a juice, like you take different fruits and you have a cocktail of this juice, this is called like kind of bulk RNAs, like you dilute the different things and you try to look for RNA sequencing. And if you take like each fruit by itself and try to analyze the transcriptome, this is a single cell. And if you are, 
uh, on a spatial form, and you see how they are organized on 3D on the spatial or where they are located. This is kind of a torch, and you are looking for spatial transcriptomics. I hope that you get the idea about uh, the, the process. So let's start, first of all, uh, with the bulk RNA sequencing. Uh, I think that most of you know that the RNA is coming from the DNA, from the nucleus, and the nucleus get transcript to get the mRNA, and the mRNA uh, went to the cytosol and can translate to the proteins. So there is an mRNA in the cells, right? But there is other uh, RNA presents in the cells, which is long non-coding RNA, uh, ribosomal RNA, circular RNA, and small RNA. So if we are interested, for example, just to analyze the mRNA, we call it total mRNA sequencing. And if we want to analyze the whole RNA, we call it a whole RNA sequencing. So it's really nice to know the exact terminology for, for each analysis for each domain. Uh, for the mRNA sequencing, actually, uh, there is uh, two different uh, technologies or methods to do RNA, uh, mRNA sequencing. Uh, that is what we call it the next generation based transcriptomics and the third generation based transcriptomics. The NGS based uh, transcriptomics, or we can call it as well short read sequencing, because the RNA is cut in small pieces to be read with a machine. On the other hand, the TGS or long read sequencing used to use the total or the full length of the mRNA to sequence. And for each method, there is a different material or different machines or technologies. For the NGS technology, the one that people use is Illumina. And into the TGS or long read sequencing, the technologies that people use to do full length mRNA without cutting the RNA on small pieces, that's called Nanopore and PacBio. So we go uh, one by one to explain the principles of uh, transcriptome sequen sequencing technologies. I will start with Illumina, where we have or NGS, where we have to cut the mRNA on small pieces to be able to read it. So uh, NGS or Illumina started like if you collect your mRNA from your cells or tissue or organ, and then you go for first step called a library preparation, like you prepare a library. What does it mean? That means that your RNA is a fragmented on a small pieces and then ligated to the ends with an adapters. This is kind of the adapters is ligated to the uh, both ends of your uh, RNA. After library preparation, you go in a step called the cluster generation. And here the adapters will be served in the second step to anchor your sequence into a fixed, um, let's call it um, platform. And this platform is called the flow cell. This fixed platform contains oligonucleotides complementary to the adapters that we added in the first step. So then our sequence can attach and then in the both sides and you have this kind of bridge in between. So we start doing amplification. So we amplify our sequences to amplify the signal afterwards. This is called the cluster generation. After step, there is a third step called sequencing by synthesis. And uh, as it's uh, saying, it's a synthesis. So we have to synthesize uh, the second, um, uh, the DNA or the RNA on, on, uh, on the fixed uh, platforms and using fluorescently labeled nucleotides uh, to try to synthesize the other uh, strand. And of course, this is sequencing will let us because we're using fluorescent labeled nucleotides and you will see that the fluorescence will change each time that the nucleotide had different fluorescence. And then the last step is the analysis because uh, each time that the nucleotide is added or into the synthesis incorporated, you get a fluorescence, like for example, red, green, yellow, and blue. And then you do analyze all these uh, uh, colors. And then you know that, for example, the red is for A, the C, and T, and G. So then you will read the sequence and you will get the sequencing done by analyzing the image. This is the, the how, how the workflow or how the technology of Illumina works each time that you want to do a sequencing on Illumina. That is something that I want to point uh, regarding the sequencing on Illumina, which call it sequencing mode, because when you have the, um, the sequence anchored to the flow cell, and here you have two ways to read it. You can read it on only one way, we call it a single read. And uh, here is the length of the, um, of the read basically on um, Illumina is around 150 BP. And this single read is just reading on one side, we call it SE, single read, um, and single end read. 
And we have a PE with both sides reads, like from L1 and L2, we call it per ends reads PE 150. And the, the choice of sequencing mode, it depends on your insert and your read, and I will go deeper afterwards on that side as well. But now we just get the knowledge. So then, as I said, on the NGS, uh, the mRNA is collected and then cut it on small pieces. And then you have ligated the adapters in the two uh, extremities. And then you use the machine to read it. We call it short read sequencing. So what's, what's the um, limitation of this technology? The limitation of this technology is like, uh, if you want to identify your reads because they are small, so you want to go to know which gene is related to this mRNA that I'm uh, sequencing. So you have to uh, align the reads to the reference genome, the genome of your species or what you are working with. And then uh, this is the reads, they are small, cutting from NGS, and then you try to do the alignment with the reference genome to see which sequence is, and then to identify the gene uh, corresponding to the reads that you sequenced. But the limitation of the technology, because we have a small reads, so we can have ending by sequence gaps. And the sequence gaps, it's really important sometimes when you do uh, identification for some genes and you miss uh, the identification of those genes. So missing sequence data leads to gaps in the genome coverage and limits variant detection. So this is one of the limitation of the short read sequencing, but it's not the only one. Uh, if we talk a little bit about the isoforms, you know that proteins can have different isoforms like alpha, beta, gamma, and this is related to different mRNA. And the mRNA is coming from one gene, but the difference is there is alternative splicing, like the mRNA is coming from is different on size because of the alternative splicing. If you want to identify different isoforms using NGS, sometimes it's difficult. So this is it's not, it's not always easy to do that, but it's not the only thing. Uh, NGS as well has a limitation on the, on, on the quantification of the isoform level uh, expression uh, on identification of fusion genes and, uh, and into the identification as well of the alternative polyadenylation. So if, if you are working or, or the question asked into your research project is related to, I would like to identify like, for example, if there is a new isoform, alternative splicing or fusion genes. So NGS could have uh, limitations on to answer to your question. So because of that, there is a new technology coming uh, after the NGS. It's called the TGS, which is third generation sequencing. And is not based on cutting the RNA on small uh, pieces, but you try to sequence the full length of the mRNA sequencing. And the length of the sequencing here is not 150 BP, but it's around 15 kilo, uh, kilo basis and 100 kilo basis. And the technology that people use for that kind of full mRNA sequencing is nanopore and PacBio. And as I said before, um, if we're using, try to compare between TGS and NGS, Elimina and Pachpayo Nanopore on TGS, you see here the, the short reads compared to the long reads. The, the long reads is the full links so that we can cover the full genes. So we can, uh, we, co we can limit the gaps that we have before on the genome when you do alignment with NGS. Uh, and we can identify multiple isoforms and we can have a high accuracy on, on, on a quantification of, this, uh, of the expression of these isoforms. So uh, if we, uh, if I will try to make the make it simple for you to understand how that is work, the technology for the full length sequencing, I will start first with nanopore, as 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 is named nanopore. So it is, it is a nano, a small pore that is anchored to the static membrane, and this pore. Uh, will allow us to do sequencing. How? Because uh, once we are preparing your uh, our library as an NGS, we prepared now for TGS, for nanopore, we have to add in the extremities where the adapters, as I said before, is added, add an adapters for the protein, which is called the Motris protein, as you can see here, to be able to attach or to anchor or to cap our uh, library of DNA. And then the protein matrix, once interact with the, our sequence, will bring the sequence to this nanopore anchored into this membrane and try to uh, put uh, the sequence inside the nanopore like nucleotide by nucleotide, as you can see here. And um, the basic of the reading of the sequence is that there is um, a current 
uh, current is passing through this static membrane. And each time you have a nucleotide passing, you have disturbance of this current. And we can uh, read it. And this is A, this is T, C, G, and so on. So uh, then it is real time reading of the sequence nucleotide by nucleotide on the nanopore technology. So this is allowing us to read the long reads like a full length of the mRNA. Uh, and there is different high, uh, different machines or high throughput of the nanopore technology now, like from the small one, the biggest one, even the ones that you can use it with your phone directly to get the data on your phone of the sequencing. And the BMK gene, we have all these different high throughput uh, machines to do the sequencing on nanopore. So in the other side, pack bio is, is, a, is a technology like it's quite, I would say, not the same as nanopore, but is um, have some similarities uh, on having small pores, uh, and this time not uh, a nanopore like not a proteins, but here a pore where the uh, DNA polymerase is anchored in the bottom of this pore, and that's allowed the DNA polymerase to get the long uh, full length of the mRNA inside the small pore, which call it zero mode waveguide as MWs. Uh, and then uh, the, the reads or the um, sequencing is made that the DNA polymerase try to synthesize the, the second uh, strand of the, of the DNA and using fluorescent nucleotides. And each time is incorporating one nucleotide with one specific fluorescence, like from the A is green, you will detect it and you will be able to read your sequence. So for the back bio, uh, as for nanopore, there is a different high throughput machines, like the ones uh, depending of your data output, like for example here from 0 0.5 uh, gigabases to even 500 gigabases. Uh, and uh, we are having, as I said before in the beginning, that BMK gene has the latest technology or machine uh, for pack bio to do sequencing with really high throughput with 25 millions on the on the ZMWs, like 25 millions of this kind of DNA anchored into the into the spots of the wells. Uh, what's the advantages of this uh, long reads compared to the short reads on NGS on Illumina? So first of all, it's less data required to cover the same number of transcripts because you are reading long, so it's less data required to cover uh, the same number of transcripts compared to NGS. The second, which is really important if you are running an experiment uh, in the lab as well, is which is an accurate gene and isoform level quantification. I will explain it a little bit in details. If you uh, use an NGS, for example, and you, you, you don't identify too much uh, your isoforms, you use just gene A and gene B. For example, condition one, there is no difference between the expression of gene A and gene B. But if you identify the different isoforms of the transcript of the gene A, for example, transcript A1, A2, and A3, and you identify the two transcript of B1 and B2, you can see where you don't have any difference, but some of the transcripts, you see that they are down expressed and some of the B, like B1 is up, uh, up really related. So then it could be that is um, the, the, the accurate, the isoform level quantification is really important when you are working on proteins having different isoforms. Uh, and on the accuracy level of the quantification that TGS or uh, Nanopore and uh, um, pack bio can offer is the is the high accuracy into the quantification of the isoform level as you can see here is around 0 0.8 uh, and here is a comparison between uh, quantification at the gene level uh, on the nanopore is 0 0.9 on the ngs is 0 0.85 it's quite comparable at the gene level but quite high uh, for a nanopore at the isoform level so uh, once finishing with um, describing the technologies, like, you know, you make your uh, decision that you will use transcriptomics of one of region of the application, uh, you know, the technology that you will use. And then now it goes oh, how it will work, how it will work in the lab and how this sequencing will be um, managed at the, at the bench level. So um, now I will talk a little bit about, about the workflow. Uh, the workflow for the all like NGS or TGS on the transcriptomic level is quite the same. And the BMK gene is using one uh, resume that I make it here, starting from the RNA extraction from your tissue or organs or cells or whatever. Uh, and then we do in uh, sample quality control to be sure that our RNA is good quality. And then we go to the library preparation 
and then library quality control. We do as well sequencing and then data quality control and then bioinformatics analysis of the data. I will try to explain one by one uh, regarding NGS and TGS. For the NGS, first step is the RNA extraction. So you can use whatever you have in the lab for the RNA extractions like chisel, column beads, and many other kits that you can find to do extraction of your total RNA. And then just to be uh, to be uh, careful to keep three, uh, minimum triplicates because then we'll help you to do statistics after in the end on the data analysis. Uh, and when you collect your RNA, you uh, go through the simple quality control. So here is just um, a control of your total amount of the RNA. For here, just requirements for a BMT gene, what's required to the client if they want to do sequencing with us for transcriptomics, the amount, the minimum amount that they have to send to us to do the sequencing is around 600 nanograms. Uh, on the concentration level is over 30 nanogram per microliters. Looking to the integrity using bioanalyzer uh, to see if your RNA is not degraded. Uh, to look to the purity, if it's not contaminated with the proteins, looking to the optical density, or if there is any uh, organic or inorganic uh, contaminations of your RNA. Um, and as well to look to the integrity using the agarose gel electrophoresis, if there is any degradation or contamination. So once you collect it, you look to the quality control, we pass to the next step, which is a library preparation. On the library preparation for NGS, as explained before, you, need, you have to add an adapters and so on, but there is two big or two uh, known used um, library preparations. Uh, one is uh, called the non-directional or non-stranded. Uh, that means that you, we will not, we will end up the result for sequencing a product has no defined orientation with three prime or five prime, which is the um, sans or anti sans uh, strand. We cannot identify because it's called non stranded. And the, the principle of working is like we um, try to um, catch all the um, mRNA with using a bit with oligo DT. And then we go for fragmentation, as I said, uh, small pieces of mRNA. And then we did the re reverse transcriptions for cDNA. And then we did uh, end repairing. And then we add the, the adapters by uh, two extremities for the NGS for Illumina sequencing. However, the other uh, library preparation type, which is a directional or stranded. And here we can uh, identify the, 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 the sense of, from the anti-sense uh, strand uh, when we do sequencing. How we do that? Actually, we, for, we uh, start by synthesizing the first um, uh, cDNA. Uh, strand, and then we, uh, during synthesizing the second strand of the cDNA, we incorporate the DUTP. And once in incorporated, we add uh, the, the adapters, and then we do degradate the strand with the DUTP. So we keep only one strand without the, which give us an orientation of our sequencing afterwards. And then we did a PCR and then we end up with our library, library, library prepared for sequencing. What's the big difference between stranded and non-stranded? Here, snapshot stranded is needed for identifying anti-science transcripts, as I said, recommended for annotation and novel transcript discovery compared to non-stranded, which is less expensive and widely used. So once you uh, you decide which which your library and then you start uh, you prepare your library you have to look for quality of this library and what we are doing in BMT Gene is to control the uh, the library using uh, analyzing the concentration of the library should be higher than one nanogram by microliters and we look to homogeneity of the library if all the fragments have the same size so uh, so the main peak will be around 400 450 and 500 pp. So once the finish with the library quality control, we go for sequencing. And here, as I said, we use NGS. NGS is Illumina. Illumina, as I said, in the beginning, there is a machine called Novas X6000 with the latest technology on Illumina for the sequencing. Uh, the sequencing mode that we're using for mRNA is PE150B. So um, in, uh, that means a pair ends in the two sites, two sites for reads. And 150 is the length of the sequence to read, BP because the mRNA is a little bit big. And the recommended, we have different recommended data output for uh, mRNA sequencing and Illumina can go from six, six gigabase, 10 gigabases, 12 gigabases and over. And once uh, you finish with the sequencing, 
that comes the data quality control. Before analyzing the data, you have to know if your sequencing works fine and you have a, a really a reliable data to work with to get a conclusion. So here, uh, there is a different steps that BMK Gene recommend and did for the client when they did uh, sequencing with us. One of is the sequencing validation. Second is sequencing yield, like to see if there is a um, data output on plus minus 5%. Uh, sequencing accuracy, and uh, here, for example, uh, look to the base calling accuracy between read one and read two, and to see if the average error rate that is an error into the sequencing accuracy. Uh, we can do as well nucleotide distributions to see how the nucleotide are distributed on the reads. Reads one, for example, compared to reads two on a percentage, and here SCGT. Uh, we did as well control um, the insert length distribution, how the insert length is distributed. Uh, we did look as well, which is a really uh, important uh, parameters, which is called the mapping ratio, how my sequence that I sequenced get mapped. And we are uh, on the mapping ratio to say that your data past the quality control need to be over 60%. Here, just an example. Uh, on a unique map reads, uh, we are over like 100, 100 to 96 uh, percent of the mapping ratio. So now, once we finish with the nano, with the with the NGS Illumina, we go to explain the workflow when you do the full length uh, mRNA sequencing using the TGS technologies, nanopore or PacBio. So we start with the nanopore. So it's the same uh, workflow that we are using uh, for the NGS. The main dif difference will be uh, on the sample quality control, uh, which needed the amount of the RNA needed and the quality of RNA is different than uh, NGS, like with a higher amount, a higher concentration, and uh, uh, basically the same on the integrity and purity. So once the quality control is same, the library is, is different from the NGS, because as I said before, the nanopore, uh, that is, an, uh, that is uh, this uh, protein, much as proteins need to have an adapters and on our uh, sequence or library at the end. So uh, basically the same uh, protocol as NGS in the beginning, like uh, getting oligo DT to get the poly ATL of the mRNA. And then we did the reverse transcriptions and did a PCR with a fast attached or rapid attachment primers. And then we add the adapters. These adapters will allow in the two extremities with the allow to the motris protein to capt uh, the sequence of the library to the nanopore to be sequenced. Uh, so this is the main difference uh, between the technologies is basically the library preparation for each technology is different. Uh, so once uh, finish for the nanopore, we go for pack bio. And for the pack bio, the, earn, the sample quality control is the same as the nanopore because they are full, full length mRNA sequencing. The difference is on the library uh, here. The library preparation is a little bit complex than the nanopore, but uh, you have to keep in mind that at the end, the idea is to get uh, an adapter ligation to get a really a circle closed um, sequence where your um, target sequence uh, or reads to be sequenced is in the middle. Uh, and then uh, by the end, this sequence will be read in, in a continuous way. And because of that, we call it a sequencing mode on packed by your circular circular consensus sequencing strategies, CCS. So uh, people using PacPy you will understand, but it's basically a way to uh, increase the accuracy of the sequencing that will generate a big data at the end, but you need to clean your data and to get a highly accurate reads at the end. So um, once done with the library preparation, you use the sequencing with the machine and then we go for uh, bioinformatic analysis when you control the, the quality of the data. Uh, for the bioinformatics, is the strategy that is the standard strategies, but there is as well the strategies that you can uh, uh, suggest and do whatever the question that you will ask uh, into your research project. So for the NGS, the, once you finish or with the sequencing, you control your data, you take your small reads, uh, sequenced, and then you go for alignment to the reference genome. When you align to the reference genome, the idea is to uh, analyze on bioinformatics the sequence structure. 
and to look for gene annotation, like try to identify the genes related to this reads that you generate after sequencing. So this is called gene annotation. To try to look if there is any SMPs, if any modification, if any insertions, if any deletions, if any mutations. Try to uh, look as well to alternative splicing, as I said, for isoforms and to identify gene structure optimizations. And in the other hand, which people basically, most of the people use transcriptomics for, is to look to uh, expression quantification, to see if your mRNA related to the gene that you are looking for is increased into the, into after your treatment or after your drug. So that's called expression quantification. So we can look to the differential expression analysis, like if you have a control situation versus treatment, and you can compare and see which ones are differentially up or down regulated which called differentially uh, uh, expressed genes. We can look to the function of these genes, which is called function annotation. We can look to the function enrichment, like enrichments of pathways, or what they are doing kind of on a function level. And we can look on a protein-protein interaction network. This is basically what we can do on, on a bioinformatics and stored on bioinformatic analysis for, from NGS data. For the TGS data, Nanopore and PacBio, actually the pipeline is different than NGS, but still the core is the same. As I said, uh, from the data, you do quality control, and then we did genome alignment to the reference genome, and we can identify the gene structures, and we can identify, as I said before, compared to NGS, the APA uh, analysis, the fusion genes, the ease of worms, uh, and we can uh, look for alternative splicing uh, we can do as well differential expression as we did for NGS, looking for functional annotation of DEG, differentially expressing genes, enrichment analysis, and uh, protein interaction networks. But uh, the more things that we can get from the, from the full length is the fusion genes, APA, and alternative splicing, and, and many others related to long non coding predictions, for example, on the long non coding RNA targets uh, compared to NGS data. For the PAC bio, actually it's the same as Nanopore. So we do high quality full length transcripts. Uh, we take the redundant full length transcripts and then we look for gene annotations and we look for gene expression. Gene annotation, as I said before, alternative splice, splicing, fusion genes, APA, uh, gene expression, differential expression uh, and uh, differential expression genes, function analysis, annotation and protein interaction. Uh, sometimes in some uh, big projects uh, of sequencing, we can couple uh, or combine between the NGS data and the pac data of sequencing instead to increase the accuracy of our sequencing of our data at the end on the bioinformatic analysis. Um, I will go next, which is um, how it looks like my data. If I choose a pipeline of doing bioinformatics to look to the gene structure, to look to the um, uh, differentially gene expressed, how I can uh, visualize my data and how it will look like. This is what I will talk about now uh, on a data interpretation and how you can expect your data from the transcriptomics analysis. First of all, if you do alignment and on the genome, and then we can use a different uh, database for the gene annotation to identify your transcript or the gene that is up or down regulated, for example. So we're using several in BMK gene, several um, uh, public databases like Gene ID, uh, COG, GO, KG. Uh, these platforms will allow us to do gene annotation. Uh, and if we want to look to the gene expression, uh, basically, uh, maybe on the publications on transcriptomics level, you will see it. They always talk about the FPKM um, um, parameter, which is the parameter that is used to uh, analyze the gene expression, which is normalized. Uh, it's a cDNA fragment of uh, the reads, normalized to the mapped fragments to the transcript of LANC. And this is basically what people use to uh, quantify or the expression of your genes on the transcriptomics lab. And once you measure this parameter, you can uh, visualize your data on different ways, like looking to the expression distribution. Like for example, there is different samples here, like N1, N2, 
to T3, you see how the here we have a log 10 FPKM, which is uh, the parameters for contagenic expression quantification. And you see that the, the T N1, the expression level, is uh, lower than the T5, T3 on the expression level on the on the genes. You can as well see, uh, visualize your data on the expression level on, on, on a heat map, and you see the correlation between the genes on the expression level. Uh, the, another point which is really important is to quantify statistically the differentially expression genes. And for that, we, uh, we, we, uh, we are using uh, on BMK gene like a full chain more than two, but some people can use more or less. Uh, the corrected p-value is around p, uh, 0.05. And we can visualize the differentially expression genes on different uh, plots, like a volcano plots. Uh, here you have, you have a log two of a fault change. That means the ones that are getting here is upregulated two times, two faults, and here is downregulated two faults. And we here minus log 10 uh, p value, that means statistically significant on the downregulation genes, and here statistically significant on the upregulated uh, up genes. It's a volcano plot, is a way just to see, uh, uh, make it easy to visualize the genes that is upregulated and downregulated regarding the fault change and the statistic uh, significance. We can use as well uh, the heat map to look to the hierarchical clustering of your genes, uh, differentially expressing genes. <clears throat> for uh, once you identify your DEG, you can go for annotation and functional arrangements. And here, what you can use different as well databases as explained before, which is a GO enrichment, for example, to see how these genes that you get upregulated, which uh, uh, gene ontology into the biological process are implicated, like into immune response, for example, or immune system reaction or whatever. Uh, and you can as well use a uh, key gigi pathway uh, annotation to see which pathways on specific um, proteins implicated. And you can uh, as well do protein protein interaction to see which uh, proteins interact with the others. Uh, this is basically all the what you can what you can do on the standard bioinformatic analysis on transcriptome uh, data. Uh, as I explained in the beginning, uh, the transcriptome is, uh, the cells can have mRNA, but they can have as well other type of RNA, which is called long, long coding, uh, ribosomal secret and small. So now let's talk a little bit about the sequencing of those small, because they are, they are really important on regulating the gene expression uh, as well. So um, I would say the, 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 if you look to the percentage on the cell, uh, on this different kind of RNA, you see that the mRNA is around one to 3%, which is really low. <laughs> Compared, for example, to ribosomal RNA, which is 80%. And uh, many other RNA are really, like long non-coding RNAs between four and 9%, and for the others are really low as well. So then that leads to give a really importance to analyze sometimes in some studies to analyze this uh, non-coding or uh, RNA for sequencing. So then the workflow, if you want to do sequencing of those non-coding RNA is the same as before, as explained before. Uh, the difference will be um, regarding the type of the small or non-coding RNA that you're looking for. So that there is a library uh, preparation different, like for long non-coding and circular RNA, they are a little bit bigger than the small RNA. So then they are sharing the same library preparation protocols. But for the small RNA, they are having size selection. For the sequencing mode that they said, the pair ends for the both because they're still big RNA compared to the small. And the small RNA, since it is small, so we're using uh, uh, on a uh, sample SE50, uh, which is a small sequence to 50 BP sequencing on the sequencing mode. And then we can modify or having different uh, data output for the different uh, take a different type of uh, sequencing and the data uh, as well output or data containing uh, is different between the different uh, type of uh, analysis. So then let's talk a little bit what's the difference then between the long long coding and circular RNA. The difference is basically on the once you do the data analysis because they are sharing the same library preparation and so on and sequencing mode. So basically on the bioinformatics pipeline, if you want to analyze the non coding RNA, what we are using at BMK gene is a little bit complex, but it's giving you a lot of readouts. Like for uh, after sequencing, you do genome alignment. 
And then you look to the gene structure, as I explained before, like alternative splicing, novel gene prediction, gene annotation. You can do as well gene expression quantification, looking to the differential expression genes, enrichment, and using different platforms or databases for that. And another thing is that you can uh, transcript identification, look for identify your long non coding uh, RNA, and then you can go for identifying target genes prediction. Uh, you can do as well uh, differential expressions and differential expression and clustering. And uh, more than that, you can join your analysis to your mRNA analysis because the long non coding RNA is sometimes controlling the expression or uh, the translation of your mRNA. So you can combine this with your data of mRNA and look for different parameters as well. For the circular RNA, uh, bioinformatic pipelines here is much more uh, simple than the long non coding RNA. It's basically try to uh, align to the genomes and then to uh, look to the circular RNA hosts, circular RNA target mRNA, to try to look to for uh, differential expression analysis, like uh, on a host gene, GO enrichments, or the pathways enrichments. Uh, another thing for the small RNA or meRNA, some people are using this nomination as well. As I said before, the library preparation is different. So it's a small RNA library preparation size selection, but then the steps is quite the same as I explained before. Uh, and then uh, the bioinformatic analysis will be basically related to identification of the mRNA uh, and try to uh, uh, try to know and novel mRNA, identify if there is any novel mRNA and look for mRNA expression and look for the target genes or target gene annotation as well. So um, I will uh, now talk a little bit about what we can offering, BMK gene can offer in transcriptomics. Basically, we are offering all the services related to NGS, uh, basically based transcriptomics on the mRNA with the reference genome or without reference genome. We're uh, doing as well sequencing for non-coding RNA. And we have as well package for whole transcriptome sequencing. We're having as well uh, services on the TGS using the both technology, Nanopore and PacBio uh, for full length mRNA sequencing. Uh, this is the package that I said about the whole transcriptome sequencing. So we're using different uh, library preparation, but we're at the end, we're getting on the data full information regarding your mRNA, long non coding RNA, circular RNA, and small RNA with a really competitive price for the whole package of transcriptome sequencing. So what BMK gene has as experience on transcriptomics, this is the advantages. We highly experienced and over 200,000 diverse sample uh, analyzed uh, type and 7,000 mRNA sequencing projects closed. We have a both technologies, as I said, NGS and TGS platforms. Uh, we're using multiple databases on the bioinformatics analysis. We have a strict quality control process, as I explained before in the workflow. Uh, we have an after sale services uh, for like helping on the analyzing the data or follow up or shootings or research quality and analysis. We have a first turnaround time since we are based in Europe and with a competitive price. So talking uh, about the price, uh, I will show you afterwards the price, how it will look like. But before that, I want just to point out that the transcriptomics that we, we have been analyzing, it has been used on different publications, like for example, on tumor immunotherapy, if people are working on inflammatory, on the inflammatory effect of drugs, uh, working on a microenvironment like a plant, working on, uh, as I said, the tumor immunotherapy and the many other uh, projects on mitochondria and uh, neuronal cells, neurology, where. So that is a different, different uh, topics and different, different uh, contributions of BMK gene on different publications. Uh, as I said, for the price, for the RNA sequencing that uh, BMK gene offers, so we can have a price starting at 100 uh, euros per sample. Uh, and if including bi bioinformatics, we can start at 118 euros per sample with a fast turnaround time around 30 days. As I said before, uh, we are having as well different uh, projects or different platforms on sequencing on different uh, scopes on the plant and animals. Uh, but I think the time will not allow us to talk about that. Just a snapshot for you. And we are doing as well uh, microbial genomics that maybe we can have uh, another webinar to talk about this kind of topics. So the idea is to try to, um, if you are satisfied with this kind of information, if it's helpful for you, if it was easy to 
to uh, to assimilate on this 45 minutes webinars and if you are interested to have another webinar with another topic i mean if your research topic is around microbial for example or human genetics so i can i can make it simple and i can make uh, like kind of free webinars for you and we can we can discuss more about that and you can of course you can write me on the on the on the on the chat zoom chat to know if you are satisfied and if you want to have another in another topics that would be that would be completely uh, fine for me. So finally, I would like to thank you for your patience and for your uh, uh, availability. Uh, and I hope I wasn't quick and I wasn't uh, complicated on the explication. And if you have any question, you just write me on the chat because I think, uh, as I said, maybe the discussion is blocked, so I can receive your questions and can see them one by one and can answer. Uh, thank you so much.